All right, let's do a few exercises from the uh, from the appendix here. Exercise 12A1, <clears throat> absorption costing and total variable costing approaches to setting a selling price. Learning objective four, Nolan Limited is considering introducing a new product. Management has gathered the following information. And you see it here on the screen. Uh, units to be produced, 10,000. Unit product cost, $16. Annual selling and administrative expenses that come in at 40000 The investment required is 400000 and management expects an 8% ROI. Required, number one, using the absorption costing approach to cost plus pricing, compute the markup the company will have to use to achieve the desired ROI. Okay, so it always helps to uh, remind ourselves uh, how we do that? What is the formula? We're looking for the markup percentage. And I'm just going to put this in brackets and I'm going to put on the bottom AC for absorption costing. So when we get to the next question for variable costing, we're not going to be confused as to what we're doing. And you'll recall um, the amount of money we need to make is our ROI times our investment. And for absorption costing, notice, remember now, absorption costing means all of our manufacturing costs are in the price. So we have to cover all the non-manufacturing costs, which are SG and A, selling general and administrative, multiplied, or sorry, divided by the amount of units we hope to make times the cost per unit. And absorption costing means all the costs are in the cost per unit. So we just have to fill in what we know. Our ROI is 8% on an investment of 400,000, so 0 0.08 times 400,000 will take care of that term. Plus, our annual SG&A expenses are 40,000, divided by our quantity units to be produced, 10,000, times our unit product costs are $16. And that will give you $72,000 over 160 which gives us 0.45. So our markup percentage is 45%. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the second question. And you can imagine it's going to ask us to do variable costing, right? Assume that the $16 unit product cost includes $3 per unit for fixed manufacturing overhead based on producing and selling 10,000 units each year. Also assume that 26,000 of the total SNA Expense of 40,000 is fixed. That leaves 14,000 variable, right? The remainder is variable. There we go. Use the total variable costing approach to calculate the markup the company will have to use to achieve the desired ROI. So what are we looking for here? Here we're looking for our markup percentage. And here it is variable costing. And that, of course, equals our return on investment times our investment plus our total fixed costs. Notice it, up here it's our non-manufacturing costs. Here it's our total fixed costs divided by our quantity times our variable cost per unit. So what does that give us on the top? It gives us 0 .08, whoops, 0 0.08 times the 400,000 that we had plus... We're told that $3 of the 16 represent fixed costs, but there's 10,000 units. So that would be $30,000 in fixed manufacturing costs. Plus, we're told that $26,000 of our SNA selling an administrative expense is fixed, divided by our units, 10,000 times. Well, if $3 is fixed out of the 16, that means 13 is variable. We have $14,000 that's variable, but we have 10,000 units, so that is plus $1.40. So that will give us 88,000 over 144,000, which is 0 0.6111. Finally, part three asks us to compute the target selling price per unit under each pricing, form, pricing approach from one and two above. And this, uh, we do the same way for each one. So we'll put our selling price for our absorption costing is equal to our cost. And the cost we used in absorption costing, remember, all of our manufacturing costs is $16 times 1.16111. One uh, 
what was our xx? 45, 1.45. And that will equal $23.20. Under the second approach, and our selling price under variable costing is equal to our cost. Careful now, don't use the same $16. You have to use the variable cost, not the manufacturing cost, not the absorption cost. This is just all our variable costs. In the numerator, this 30,000 represents manufacturing costs that are fixed that are not in the price, and this $1.40 represents a cost per unit that is a non-manufacturing cost but is variable. Don't, don't make the mistake of using the same cost in each one. So this is $14.40 times one point, and our xx is 6111, will give you the same 2320. You should end up with the same price under both approaches because all costs are accounted for. In, in absorption costing, all of our non-manufacturing costs, sorry, all of our manufacturing costs are here. Our non-manufacturing costs are here, but we have accounted for all the costs. Under variable costing, all our fixed costs are here, all our variable costs are here, but we've accounted for all of the costs. We just have a lower cost versus a higher cost. It should come out to the same price. If it's not coming out to the same price, you made a mistake somewhere. Exercise 12A2 will give us a look at learning objective five, target costing. Little River Cycles produces and distributes carbon fiber road bikes. Management is eager to take advantage of the growing market for these bikes. To be competitive, LRC's sales manager estimates that the bike can't be priced at more than $2,000. At this price, management thinks the company can sell 1,000 bikes per year. Producing the bikes will require an initial investment of $2 million, and the company's target ROI is 25%. So, I put the important information across the top. We're going to make 1,000 units. We can't sell them for more than 2,000. We're going to need a $2 million investment, and we want to make 25%. So what are we required to do here? Calculate the target cost of one carbon fiber road bike. So what we want to do is we'll start off with total sales. And that will be 1,000 units times $2,000. <clears> Gives us $2 million in total sales. Less our ROI. And our ROI is 0.25 times 2 million. I'll just put an M instead of all the zeros. That will give us 500,000. So our total costs must come in at 1.5 million or less. There is our total cost. So our per unit cost, I think it's easy to see, our per unit cost is our total cost divided by our quantity, and our quantity was 1,000. So just take off the zeros at the end, you get $1,500. Now notice we could have gone about this a different way. We could have said uh, the cost, uh, the selling price per unit is $200, and our ROI per unit would be 2.25 uh, times 2 million divided by 1,000. We could have deducted the 500. We could have made this into the per unit cost, and simply ended right there at the uh, 1500. So it depends, it didn't, didn't matter which way you wanted to go on this. Listen, that was short, we got room. Let's uh, do exercise uh, 12A3, which will bring us through learning objective four. Let's have a look at what that asks us. Time and materials pricing, that's a good one. Ronnie's Repair Company provides repair services for small engines and uses time and materials pricing. The company has budgeted the following costs for next year. Mechanics wages and benefits, 900,000. Other repair costs, except for parts related costs, this is just other uh, uh, repair related costs, 450,000. Cost of ordering, handling, and storing parts, 40% of invoice cost. In total, the company expects to have 50,000 hours of billable repair time next year. According to competitive conditions, the company believes it should aim for a profit of $8 per hour of each mechanic's time. The competitive markup on parts is 40% of invoice cost. Required number one, compute the time rate 
and the materials loading charge that would be used to build jobs. So let's start with the first part, the, uh, the time rate. It is composed of three components, you recall. It is composed of our direct labor costs per hour. And we're told that they are 900,000, including all benefits. And we have 50,000 hours to spread them out against. So we will get $18 per hour. Next, we want all our other costs associated with repair, all our other costs of repair. And we're told those are 450,000. Again, over the same 50,000 hours will give us $9 per hour. And finally, our third component is our target profit per hour. And we're told it's just $8. So adding the three components, we will get to $35 per hour. The second part of the question asks us to determine uh, the materials loading charge. Well, we're told straight up I'm going to just put materials loading charge. We're told straight up is 40%. There is no calculating there. It is just what it is. And number two, one of the company's mechanics has just completed a repair job that required 12 hours of time and $100 in parts at invoice cost. Compute the amount that would be billed for this job. So we have 12 hours at $35 per hour. $420 in labor time. We have materials, we're told is $100, and we have a loading charge. And our loading charge is 40%, which is $40. That will come to $560. $560. That's a five, not an eight. I know my fives look like eights, but that's a five. $560. Done.